Hi guys, this is the Ninja Dual Brew Pro coffee maker. You can use it as a single serve coffee maker, brew a whole pot, and froth milk to make specialty drinks. Since this video is going to be long, I'll put timestamps for each function down in the description section. So if you're just looking for one thing, you can get straight to it. The unit measures 15.5 inches in height, 7 inches wide, and 14.4 inches deep with the reservoir in the back. The reservoir can also go on the side, that would make it about 9 and a quarter inches wide and 11.4 inches deep. It weighs 9.7 pounds. The cord length is 28 inches. With this coffee maker, you get a pod adapter, brew basket, a few paper filters, number fours, 60 ounce glass carafe and lid, 60 ounce removable water reservoir with a lid, froth or whisk, a coffee scoop, quick start guide with two recipes, and a manual. If you want to move the reservoir to the back of the unit, take the reservoir off, remove this tab, and slide this base over to the back. And you want to put this tab on the side. You'll hear that click when it's in. Slide the reservoir onto this tab. The coffee maker fits under my cabinets. If I want to use a pod, I'll still have to pull the coffee maker out from underneath the cabinets to put the pod in. You can pull down this tray when you're brewing a single cup. Clearance is about five and a half inches. For a travel mug, there's about eight inches of clearance. The control panel will give you all the size options for the pod side and the carafe side. Plug the unit in and set the time using the hour and minute button. Get the power on button. Use the dial to set the hour. Press the hour minute again and use the dial to set the minutes. The four brew styles are a classic, rich, You'll get a few ounces less coffee with the rich setting over ice or specialty. Specialty brew will give you four ounces of concentrated coffee to make lattes, cappuccinos, etc. This unit is not an espresso maker, so you're not getting an actual espresso. It'll give you very strong coffee for specialty drinks. The sizes and differences with each style is listed in the manual, which you probably don't want to read because it's 23 pages. Don't worry, I'll tell you everything you need to know. Before you brew coffee for the first time, clean the coffee maker. Add water to the reservoir full line. Put the carafe on the plate. Make sure this tab is all the way to the right. It's the drip stop, so you want to make sure it's open. Turning it all the way to the left closes it. It'll say closed over here. And that's when you want to pull the carafe out to pour a cup of coffee so the machine will stop dripping. So leave it to the right. Remove the adapter and lift out. Slide the lid over the brew basket. Turn the dial to full carafe or 55 ounces. The brew style should be classic, it's already chosen. And then press start brew. The machine's going to beep before it starts brewing. It's 185 degrees Fahrenheit. Discard the water and now you can brew coffee. So it beeps um, about two minutes after you think it's done brewing. There was no dripping at all and you know you can't hear it pour so it's okay to pull the pot out. You can always turn the tab to closed to prevent any further dripping. I'll show you how to brew a cup using the pot. Slide the lid back, leave the brew basket in, put the pot adapter in and slide to lock. Lift the lid, 
put your pot in and close the lid, making sure that the needles are going to puncture the top. Put the tray down, put a mug on top. You can see the pot icon is illuminated. With the pod, you can brew six sounds, eight, 10, or 12. I'm gonna choose 10 ounces. The brew style I'm gonna leave is classic and just press the metal to brew. That took a minute and 30 seconds. The temperature is 172 degrees Fahrenheit. I didn't heat the cup, so um, a cold cup could affect the temperature by a few degrees. This coffee is plenty hot for me. A little cream. If you want to get this Ninja, click on the link right below the video. I use the same pods that I use in a Keurig. This tastes the same. It tastes very good. It's not bitter. It's comparable to the Keurig. After you're done brewing, lift the lid and remove the pod. Just be careful of the needles, they are sharp. And the needle on the bottom. So be careful when you clean this. You can see the three piercings on top and one on the bottom. There's remove. To remove the pod adapter, the pod adapter is compatible with only K-cup pods. You can't use the reusable K-cup filter with this unit. Ninja doesn't make a filter for this model as far as I know, so I bought this one online. I'll show you how it works and leave a link below the video if you want to get it. Use the included scoop to measure coffee. The instructions that came with this reusable filter say to fill it two-thirds, three quarters, no more than that. With the Keurig reusable filter, I fill coffee to the first line for a 10 ounce cup and that usually works well. I'll brew a cup using the exact same amount of coffee I use in a Keurig. The filter fits perfectly, it sits right on top. Brew size 10 ounces, brew style classic, press start. That took a minute and 30 seconds. There's some coffee grounds on the top here. I brew the same 10 ounce cup in my Keurig with the same amount of coffee, tasted that, and both cups taste very similar. There really isn't a noticeable difference. With the Keurig filter though, there are no coffee grounds in the coffee. Right after you brew with the Ninja, there are gonna be a few coffee grounds on top, but it settles in a few seconds. You can definitely try one of the other uh, filters that are available online for this model. I got this particular one because it was stainless steel and most of the other ones were plastic. So although this works fine, it's not perfect. Remember though, with this filter, you can't fill more than the amount I showed you. It's not gonna be as strong if you brew 12 ounces in a Keurig because with the Keurig filter, you can add more coffee grounds. There's a second line on top for a bigger cup, so you can put more coffee in the uh, Keurig reusable filter. Make sure to wait a few minutes before pulling the filter out because it is stainless steel and it's hot. Now I'll brew a quarter carafe of coffee. I have a gold tone permanent filter from another coffee maker. I'm just gonna use that. If you use the number four paper filters, fold along the seams to fit into the basket. Use either the paper filters or the gold tone permanent filter. Don't use both. So I'll use two big scoops. And for the coffee, use a medium grind, not too fine. Brew style is classic. Set the size to 28 ounces. And press brew. The warming plate turns on while brewing in the carafe and stays on for two hours. 189. 
that took four minutes and 20 seconds. It's 181 degrees Fahrenheit. While it was brewing, I measured it and it was 189 degrees right out of the brewer. The coffee tastes fine. It's not weak. Open the lid and pull out the brewer basket. Don't forget to put the brew basket after you clean it. I'm going to brew just a cup of hot water to show you. It's really convenient to get hot water for a cup of tea or oatmeal. Just turn the dial on the left to the water droplet to match the black tab. Choose water temp, boil or hot. I'll use boil. Eight ounces and brew. One hundred and eighty two degrees. That took one minute and fifteen seconds. I just tasted it. It doesn't smell like coffee and it doesn't taste like coffee. The hot water system is independent, so that's why it doesn't taste like coffee. With other coffee makers, the hot water and coffee come out of the same spout. And sometimes there is a residual smell or taste of coffee. Sometimes when you brew a cup of coffee using the filter or a pod, you forget to take it out. And if you brew hot water next, your hot water is not going to be hot water. It's just going to be watered down coffee. So this is a unique and convenient feature of this Ninja. Next, I'll show you how to use the frother. You can froth hot or cold milk, dairy or non-dairy milk. The frother is not going to heat your milk. You have to heat up the milk before frothing. I'm using whole dairy milk. If you're using a microwave, heat up the milk 45 to 60 seconds. I'll heat up the milk. If you brew just hot water, make sure to turn the dial back. Otherwise the display will show the hot water settings. First I'll brew a specialty cup which is about four ounces. I'll use a pod. Choose brew style specialty. We'll say four ounces and just press brew. It will start and stop during the cycle and that's normal. There's a power button on top of the frother. The whisk should be just below the surface of the milk. Press and hold the button on top of the frother for 30 to 45 seconds. And just take the frother with you so there's no mess. It looks good. I'll taste it. It's not bad at all for a fake espresso. So in about 30 seconds, the frother did a really good job of frothing the hot milk. If you want to set the coffee maker to brew at a later time, make sure to take the pod adapter out, put your coffee in here, and slide the lid forward. Press delay. Use the dial to change the hour. Press the middle. You can change the minutes. Press the middle and change the brew style if you want. Press the middle again and change the size. When you're done with all the settings, press the middle again. You'll hear that beep and delay will be displayed as uh, well as that it's going to brew in the carafe. There'll be a little coffee bean and the size here and the brew style. Just make sure you fill the reservoir with enough water and have put your coffee grounds in. And leave the coffee maker on. Don't turn it off accidentally. To cancel the delay brew, just press delay. To clean, all the removable parts are dishwasher safe, except for the sliding lid and the pot adapter. The glass carafe, brew through lid, brew basket, water reservoir, its lid, the frother whisk, and the scoop are all dishwasher safe. The frother falls away. The frother whisk should be cleaned after each use. You can put it on the top rack of your dishwasher or hand wash. To clean the sliding lid, open the hood on the back of the brewer and then slide the lid out of the back. Don't put it in the dishwasher. Hand wash it in warm soapy water.
Slide the lid back on the tracks and close the hood. Hot adapter is not dishwasher safe. Hand wash also. And be careful with the needles on top and on the bottom. The rest of the unit can be wiped down with a damp cloth. That's the clean cycle. That takes 75 minutes. It's used for descaling the unit. And this will automatically illuminate orange when the unit needs to be cleaned. And like with most coffee makers, you can clean the unit with vinegar and water or by a descaling solution. The instructions are in the manual. Basically, you're going to fill 16 ounces of white vinegar and the rest of the reservoir with water up to the full line. Press the clean button and then it'll run the full cycle. Wash the reservoir and then fill it with fresh water. Then you run a water only cycle. You can do that once or twice if the taste of uh, vinegar is still there. With most Ninja products I've reviewed, um, they're very user friendly and um, intuitive and simple to use. With this one though, there are a lot of functions, a lot of sizes, a little bit too much, I think. Um, I, I think it could have been simplified. It functions well. Um, the coffee was hot. It was good. It was tasty. You can do a lot with this unit. You can brew a whole carafe, just hot water, just a single cup, use a travel mug, use your own ground coffee for the pod side if you buy a permanent filter. The hot water feature is great. And I don't think I've reviewed any other coffee machine with an independent hot water system. I really like the width of this Ninja. For all the functions it has, it is on the slimmer side. And being able to put the reservoir in the back also saves you a couple of inches on counter space. So that's definitely a big plus. The brewing time is fine. It's comparable to most Keurigs and the Cuisinart 2-in-1 coffee maker that I reviewed earlier. As with any other machine that tries to do it all, it can be a little confusing at first, but after you use it a few times, it should be fine. So if you want all this functionality, then this Ninja is a decent option. If you want to get this Ninja, click on the link right below the video. You can also check out the Cuisinart 2-in-1 review. I'll put a link to that below. You can brew a full carafe with that one and a single cup. It does not have a frother, but it's less expensive than this Ninja. So it really depends on how many things you want your coffee maker to do. I hope you got all the information you need on this Ninja. Share this video and give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.